This video is dedicated to and in memory of Harold Ramis, who did more for modern comedy than any other. Thanks for the countless laughs and teaching the world who to call. <sighs> Finally get a minute to myself to relax. J-Rock, what do you want? No, I'm sorry, I can't help you. You got the wrong number. J-Rock, what do you want? No, listen, I'm sorry, I'm not licensed to do that. I know my reputation precedes me, but I'm not licensed to do that, and so I can't help you out, all right? You got the wrong number, you gotta call somebody else. Like, marshmallow on a mop. Does nobody know who you're gonna call anymore? I guess it's time that J-Rock has to school these bitches. Hey there, I'm J-Rock. Not only am I a retro gaming YouTuber and a child of the 80s, but if you have any observational sense at all, you'll be able to ascertain that I am a fan of... And uh, now this spans back to my childhood. I was a big fan of, uh, uh, first of all, the cartoons was really influential on me. The movies came later in life. I did see the movies when I was a kid, and actually uh, the first movie was... Actually, this is probably one of my first memories, is uh, the librarian scene from the first movie I probably saw when I was about four years old. And uh, when the librarian popped out there, I remember I was at my grandmother's house with my other uh, brother. And uh, the librarian popped out and we screamed and ran out of the room. And that's like one of my earliest memories and it is actually of Ghostbusters and of being scared of it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the movie, cartoon, big fan of the cartoons, of course, when you're a kid, that brings the toys. So, uh, you know, I have some collectibles here I'm going to show you because, uh, I was inspired by my buddy Buried on Mars, who did a collection video of his own, and, uh, I have quite a bit myself, so I'd like to do a video on it. I think it would be interesting. And there's been a little bit of, uh, demand for it, I guess. Uh, so, uh... What else do I say? Not only uh, do I have some toys from when I was a kid here to show you, but uh, in, in the last few years I actually have uh, done a few things related to Ghostbusters that's pretty sweet. I, uh, I've sat in the Acto-1 at Niagara Comic Con. I got to sit in that and get a few pictures taken. Uh, and I also got to meet Ernie Hudson, which was awesome. He's a really cool guy and uh, really personable. He shook your hand and just a real nice guy, and uh, yeah, big Ghostbusters fan here. No surprise uh, at this point. So I'm just gonna get into this video and uh, show off some of my stuff. So let's go for the ride, people. So, uh, with Ghostbusters, not only is there toys, there's also clothing. I have a few pieces of clothing. Uh, the first thing here is, uh, you know, the just normal style Ghostbusters shirt with the symbol there. It's uh, quite a few years old, and as you can see, the symbol is getting worn. I'm due for a new one. So there's that one. Uh, you know, I'm also wearing Mr. Stay Puffed pajama pants. Let me get on the table there. Mr. Stay Puffed Pajama Pants, and uh, also I, I own a couple pairs of uh, Ghostbusters underwear, but I don't think I'm going to show that because nobody wants to see that and I don't want to get my account shut down. Okay, so I'm going to switch into another shirt. 
All right, my second shirt here I have to show you is actually not a licensed Ghostbuster shirt, but it is uh, by Omega Level. You can find it on their site. They got a lot of great, great uh, geek chic style shirts. This one here says, Dr. Venkman crushes ass. And it has uh, panties on the proton pack. Very clever. I saw these guys with their booth at Fan Expo in Toronto. And uh, when I was walking by, I was walking by with a sleeveless shirt and they were able to see my Ghostbusters tattoo. Bustin' makes me feel good. It has proton pack there the beam shooting out and zapping Slimer who's getting sucked into a trap. So yeah, they were able to see my Ghostbusters tattoo and so uh, I wanted to get this shirt and they could tell that I was a Ghostbusters fan and loved it so much that they gave me this shirt half price. So uh, thanks to Omega Level, check them out for great t-shirts. There's a lot of cool ones there that I have my eye on. Uh, yeah, this is a great shirt. Now on to the last shirt. This shirt's great. Uh, I modified it. I cut the sleeves off of it uh, so I could uh, show off my tattoo. I've worn it to uh, a couple of events. It uh, has the straps of the Proton Pack designed on it, as well as Venkman's name tag, the symbol, and uh, some slime on there. That uh, green slime, it's actually glow in the dark which is pretty cool. I've, uh, I've actually seen it glow in the dark sometimes when I go to bed. And uh, yeah, I forget sometimes that it is glow in the dark, and so it's pretty cool. So that's my clothing. Now let's get into my collectibles. Here's Ghostbusters 1 and 2 on DVD. Believe it or not, but I never actually owned it on VHS. My ex-stepfather owned the Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 on Laserdisc, so those were the versions that I watched. But he's an ex-stepfather, so I no longer have access to those. This is a good DVD set to own, because not only does it come in an awesome holographic cover and cool slime-themed DVD cases, but you get this Ghostbusters movie scrapbook. The design of this book is great. It's full of all sorts of production photos, concept drawings, and a whole bunch of behind-the-scenes info. It has early storyboards, as well as some early concept designs for the logo. Some aren't that good. Hey look, it's Casper. Here's the Ghostbusters original soundtrack on tape. My sister picked this up for me at a thrift store. As well as its title track, this soundtrack comes with such timeless classics as Cleaning Up the Town, Saving the Day, In the Name of Love, I Can Wait Forever, Hot Night, Magic, Main Title Theme, and Dana's Theme. If we read some of the fine print here, I'm sure we'll see Ray Parker Jr. thanking everyone for a musical career. <laughs> now, I wasn't sure if I was going to show this, but you seem cool. This ain't Ghostbusters. This is a porn parody. And yes, those are cartoon boobs on the cover. I'd show you the back, but it's too hardcore for YouTube. It's Blu-ray 3D and actually comes with 3D glasses. Now, yeah, that's a little weird to be watching 3D porn, but hey, I bought this as a collector's piece, I swear. I'd buy that for a dollar. The production value is actually pretty high, with great costumes, set designs, as well as some top-notch special effects. They even did the hotel scene with Slimer, where he's going around sliming things. I can't show the whole picture here. Ron Jeremy even makes a cameo at the beginning as the librarian. Which is funny because he appears as an extra at the end of the first Ghostbusters movie. Which is notable because it's the first and only time an adult film star has appeared in the original film as well as the adult parody. If you want a good laugh and aren't offended by the human body, then check it out. Alright, moving on to some games. Here's the original disappointment, Ghostbusters by Activision. And its follow-up, Ghostbusters 2, also by Activision. And equally disappointing. We just couldn't get a good Ghostbusters game back then. Here's Ghostbusters 2 for the Game Boy. It's comparable to the PAL-only new Ghostbusters 2 that was released only in Europe for the NES. 
but since it's a handheld, its sound and graphics are far primitive. Here's another handheld, Extreme Ghostbusters for the Game Boy Advance. This game is based off of the 90s reboot of the same title, Extreme Ghostbusters. It has cutscenes that are pretty well done at the firehouse there. Now we're getting into some gameplay and the first level here is a driving scene. Now I gotta get to the building here and it doesn't control very well. It actually looks a lot like Grand Theft Auto, the original, uh, with the overhead view, but it doesn't control very well, and it's not very fun. So you suffer through that, and you finally get to the building, and you're met with more disappointment because it's a crappy platformer with uh, bad jumping mechanics, and yeah, you wish you would shoot some proton beams because you were in a Ghostbusters game, right? But no, you're shooting whatever the hell this is. We had to wait till 2009 for a great Ghostbusters game. I have the Wii and PlayStation 2 versions here, which are the exact same game. Although I don't have a physical copy, I have the Xbox 360 version downloaded on my hard drive. The graphics are a lot more realistic, whereas the previous generation systems are much more cartoonish, which they do to very good effect. I also have the arcade game Sanctum of Slime, which isn't that bad. But if you'd like to learn more, Ask Buried on Mars Kevin here. He loves this game and would love to tell you all about it in his review. Click anywhere on this screen to see it. It didn't arrive in time for the video, but I placed an order for a PSP UMD video. I don't know what they were thinking with the whole UMD idea, but this is the only one I see worth having in my collection. I don't care if kids want you instead, He-Man. Get out of my friggin' video. Oh, I thought it was gonna be He-Man. Oh, is that what you thought, you ungrateful yuppie larva? Do you want me to lay the smack down on you like I did to He-Man? No? Well then know your role, shut your hole, and respect the f Ghostbusters. Seriously though, don't you just want to hurt this child? A child. Now probably number one on the coolness factor in my collection is uh, the Ghostbusters Firehouse. Now, over the years, this thing's seen some action, so it's missing some pieces. It's missing the sign that hangs from these two holes here. If we turn it cross-section... Oh god, so many, so many hours played here. Uh, it's missing the pole, which connects here and uh, runs up and, and rests at this level. There's a switch up here you can press at the top. When the pole is uh, on, it moves the, uh, the platform away from here, and it spins down, and your character can stand on it, and it spins down to the bottom level. So, uh, yeah, so many, so many years uh, I've held on to this thing, and I'll never get rid of it. And, uh, you know what looks awesome in uh, the driveway? The Ecto-1. Now, this is probably my favorite uh, piece, actually, in the whole collection. If I had to keep only one thing, it would be the Ecto-1. There it has, uh, has a little seat at the top there for someone to sit in with a cannon on it. Functioning doors on both sides. See, mine's a little damaged. It has seriously, it's seen some action. Doors, little little wheel in there. Seats three in front. At the back, it opens up, and uh, there's a claw here that you use to uh, catch ghosts. Uh, I also have a I also have an extra door for some reason. So if anybody has a uh, need of a, an extra left side door, let me know. J-Rock will help you out. Here's the Ghostbusters plane, and you'll notice that the plastic on the body did not age well. It's got that yellow tinge to it. This one came with the ghost that hangs onto the wing there. Got all the stickers on it still. His hand just goes into that slot. 
This came with uh, a couple torpedoes, or bombs, whatever you want to call them. One for each wing, but I missed, I lost one of those. Here's a cool little claw thing. Used for grabbing ghosts. Here is a cannon. Some cool stickers all around. And there's the butthole of the plane. Where you can capture the ghosts in the butthole. Yeah! Here's the helicopter that was featured in the cartoon, but it's in really rough shape. Missing the nose to it, and I just recently, my mom actually found one of the propellers in the basement. You pull the trigger on this and it spins the uh, propeller and also pulls up the hook for doing some daring air rescues. And over the years, all the use, you get knots in these little, in this little tiny string. You're not getting that out. The last vehicle I have to show you here is a bit of a take on the street sweeper. It's some sort of ghost-busting street sweeper. It has a flag on it, which I actually just found recently at my mom's place. As with all the Ghostbusters vehicles, they have some pretty cool stickers. As you can see, when you move this one, the wheels spin and pull in any ghost that might be stupid enough to be jaywalking on the street. The containment unit. Let's see what's in here. Ugh, Krang. None of my video, bruh. Let's see what actual ghosts are in this containment unit. Let's start off with here. I put this guy in here because he won't fit in the actual unit. This is some sort of tornado type ghost. Okay, we got a whole bunch in there. Let's see if I can dig them out. Here's a running ghost. Gray in color. With his tongue sticking out. His legs all Tasmanian devil. Come on. Get out of there. Ugh. Ugh. Look at this rotund masterpiece. Now this guy, I think, stuck onto the chest of Janine, one of the Janine characters, and you spin him up and it makes Janine's head spin or something, or her legs spin. Here's an orange dude. I think I have a couple of these guys. Let's see what else we got. Oh, little blue guy. Raising the roof. Put him in there. Ooh, this guy goes with the street sweeper thing. He's walking along the street and just gets sucked into the street sweeper. That's all he's good for. Oh, this one's gonna give me trouble. Come on. Get out of here. I'm surprised it fits. It's this cool looking spider thing. Translucent skin stretched over a spider frame. Okay, what else we got in here? Getting too deep for my fingers. Oh, no, oh, got something. Ooh, this little guy came with uh, Ghostbusters slime. I remember that. Here's another dude who I believe likes to hug the Ghostbusters. That's why his arms are like that. So if you don't watch your back, it's going to get you from behind. This guy always reminds me of Zeus, because of lightning bolts. Focus, damn you. Yeah, he's all like, jacked up. He's all like, lightning bolt-like. 
Anything else? A couple more things. There's another one of those orange guys I was talking about. And here's a cool little dude. I actually, I had a glow-in-the-dark white one that was the same as this, but I don't know where that is now. That was pretty cool. And back in the containment unit they go, where they belong. Hey, remember these things? These stick out in most people's minds from the haunted human set. It appears normal, but no, it's a haunted human. A lot of features in this one with the eye at the top there, Cyclops. Eyes bulge out, teeth come down. Jaw comes open, exposing sharp teeth. So much detail in these ones. Even the tongue moves. Definitely a cool piece. The next one's cool. Another transformable type toy. The toilet. It's actually called Fearsome Flush. It's pretty sweet. Most people that see this, they, they get a kick out of it. It's got a tongue that comes out there. Yellow teeth, probably from smoking. And, uh... Bloodshot, bulging eyes. Now onto some gear. I never owned the Proton Pack, but I did own this, the Ghost Popper. It would fire foam rounds by pushing that plunger there. Of course those get lost over the years. The coolest piece of equipment that I have, the Trap. This thing looks so cool. Complete with pneumatic compression technology. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore. It's been played out. Had a lot of fun with this growing up. Has all bells and whistles on it. Glows in the dark. On wheels. Just when in use, don't stare directly into it. Alright, the moment everyone's been waiting for. Figure time. Here's Peter Venkman. Original release. Brown uniform. Here is a... Fright features. Peter Venkman, where you push his arm, his hair pops up there and his eyes and jaw pop open, but the mechanics for that toy aren't working very well anymore. And the third and final Peter Venkman toy I have to show you here is from the Power Pack Heroes set. These figures came with uh, big huge backpack items. Here's the original Ray Stance figure. Had my brother's initials on it, M, and I put my J in there. J-Rock, baby! Stand there. Oh, uh, I'll lay down there. Have a lay. Here's the Fright Features Ray. His ears come out and wiggle out, and he pops his top, too. Yeah, just join your buddy there. And here is the Power Pack Heroes Ray. I prefer the look of the original uniforms, but these ones are pretty sweet too. Here is a Fright Features Egon. He had a longer tie, but I hear the common problem with those is they bust off over time. Move his arm and he pops his head up and his jaw comes down and the tie moves. Now I had a power pack Egon, but I don't know where it is now. It's probably in my mom's basement. It came with that tornado ghost you saw earlier. Here's the only Winston I ever had growing up. It's from the Slimed Heroes line. The type of plastic it has there changes color with cold water and slime shows up on their uniform. I'm not sure if the plastic changes color after all these years. I haven't checked that out. She's suited up and stepping out from behind the desk, it's Janine from the Power Pack Heroes set. Everyone's favorite receptionist came equipped with all her own ghostbusting gear. Okay, here's some random items. This item came with the Power Pack Peter Venkman. It came with a projectile it would shoot with the push of this button. But of course, all projectiles as a kid get lost. And of course, the coolest item any of the Ghostbusters figures could have on them is the Proton Pack. Don't really remember which character this one came with, 
but they're all universal for use with the Ghostbusters, which is cool. So I'm just going to pop this on Peter Venkman, and he will be ready to bust some ghosts, and hopefully avoid being slimed again. Super long plastic piece there for the beam. Surprised it's not snapped off after all these years. Busting makes me feel good. Here's actually a power pack item. It used to have a hook on it and it would roll on the ground and the hook would come out and grab a ghost. But it's busted. And finally I have Slimer from the Gooper Ghost set. These sets came with a can of slime which was called ectoplasm. I don't know if you remember that. It was a strange time. What you would do is you'd put the slime in this top of this canister here and there was a plunger you'd push down and it would shoot out through Slimer's mouth. I still remember the way that slime smells too. wonder if I can order some of that stuff online. Hmm, I wonder. Here's some Ghostbusters comics. This first one here I had when I was a kid. The second one I got later. Look how worn this is. Ooh, an advertisement for Quirk for the Game Boy. Looks like cool spot. Really great drawings in this comic, as well as good writing. Oh, look, here's a little advertisement for Bonk. Bonk's Adventure, a little comic strip. Advertisement for the TurboGrafx-16. I really couldn't tell you how many times I've read this comic. Just looking at it brings me down memory lane. Cool thing about this is it would have pictures of fellow Ghostbusters fans. Look at that nerd! Who the hell collects Ghostbusters stuff like that? Here's a cool poster. Each one came with a fold-out poster in the center. Here's some more kids dressed up like Ghostbusters. The Ultimate Game Club advertisement. Hey kids, have the power to order almost any video game ever made with one phone call. Here's an advertisement for some sort of role-playing game. Paper role-playing game, I believe. Ralph Snart. Sounds like Shart. And an advertisement for Icy. Cool, refreshing drink. Just one more thing I wanted to point out to you. See, it's on the back here. Here is a contest for Kung Fu Heroes for the NES. The winner takes $10,000 for this contest. I always thought it was pretty cool. They tell you to take a picture of your screen and send it in, which probably back then wasn't that easy to do. Apparently you had to get 99 million points and not go over that in order to enter this. It was so awesome the way that they had different contests and tournaments back then. Great artwork in this ad as well. So fire up your copies of Kung Fu Heroes and take a snapshot of your highest score and send it into old J-Rock. Or not. Whatever. I'm not telling you what to do. Oh yeah, and here's the second comic, but I'm not going to flip through it for you. Here's another thrift shop find by my sister. She picked this up for me. A Slimer bobblehead. It's pretty detailed. It sits on a spring there. Yeah, look at the detail on this. The wrinkles and the warts and bumps. His butt. Yeah, pretty good job. It's missing some fingers is all. But yeah, it just sits on there. Oh, gotta sit a certain way. Comes on this really cool base, filled with all sorts of food stuff that Slimer would love to gorf down, as well as his name on the base there. The Ghostbusters phone from the start of my video, another thrift shop find by my sister. She's awesome. This is actually a pulse tone phone, not a dial tone phone. So you couldn't even use it if you wanted to. But, it's cool to have around, not gonna get rid of it. Who are you gonna call? These are actually lunch bags that I used as a kid. 
We used to have PBs and Js in these. Has the Ghostbusters 2 symbol as well as a name place for who the lunch belongs to. Pretty cool to still have. Ghostbusters also had trading cards. Here's one, but I did own more. They're hiding somewhere, I guess in a closet or box or something. They had various blurbs about the movie and they were each numbered and, you know, gotta catch them all, right? The last thing I have to show you actually doesn't belong to me. It's my wife's from her thimble collection. A Ghostbusters thimble with Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and Sigourney Weaver's name on it, as well as the tagline, they're here to save the world. The Ghostbuster symbol is backwards, which I think is a way to get around the copyright laws. Hey, if you're watching this, thanks for sticking through to the end of the video. That's, uh, you know, it's, I've got quite a lot of stuff in my collection, I realize, and, uh, you know, I hope it was as fun for you to see as, as fun as it was for me to edit it all together. Because <laughs> I can assure you, this is not going to be fun. I got a lot of footage, a lot of stuff, but uh, I hope to get it out soon. Hopefully you're watching this not long after I shot this. Uh, I have one more collectible actually that I have to show you and it's something that my wife picked me up the other day because she's super awesome. I have an awesome wife and uh, she supports my, my hobbies and interests. And so she went to Toys R Us and picked me up the Lego Ghostbusters Ecto-1 with uh, all four Ghostbusters. She picked that up from Toys R Us. Uh, and it's for the, uh, the 30th anniversary. And uh, she got this. We, we live in Canada, and she got it for uh, 67 all, all in, you know, with taxes included, it came to $67 Canadian. Uh, you know, Lego is super expensive. I, you know, I, I love Lego as a kid, uh, but like seeing it in the stores now, it is just like criminal how expensive it is. And uh, I would not have spent any money on Lego if it were not for the fact that this is just so cool. Acto One uh, Lego set. It's uh, 508 pieces, so uh, it's a great collector's piece. Uh, I was kind of humming and hawing. I was, well, I was toying with the idea of not opening it, but I mean, I, it's, I'm never going to sell it. A lot of this stuff, like, I'm, I'm not going to sell this stuff. I'm keeping it, uh, hopefully to have on display when we have a house in my, like, game room or something. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to keep this sealed. I'm going to open it. So, you know, thanks for watching my video. Click like and subscribe. Share if you're a Ghostbusters fan as well. You know, and, uh, you know, if, hopefully I was inspired by my friend to do this video. If I inspire you, please do a Ghostbusters collection video and let me know. Share it with me on Twitter. Uh, you know, Ghostbusters, it's been a huge thing in a lot of people's lives. There's so many fans out there. It's hailed as like one of the best movies of all times and uh, just one of the best franchises. And I got a lot of the stuff to prove that I'm a fan, as well as a, a pretty spitchin' ass tattoo, if you ask me. So, this has been J-Rock, thanks for watching, and keep on busting them ghosts.